So I've been on your Instagram, like religiously just stalk, stalking your Instagram page. And I noticed that if you one or two pictures will be about the bookstore, one will be about your, your uh, home life. But mm -hmm. the third picture is always a picture of a cocktail. What, what is your favorite cocktail? Whiskey neat. Um, whiskey neat? Whiskey neat. Any decent whiskey. Um, an old fashioned is as cocktail-y as I'll go. I just want to drink the drink, feel the drink, and enjoy the drink. <laughs> I want to respect the alcohol. Respect the alcohol. <laughs> um, do you make them yourself or do you prefer a bartender? prefer wherever the whiskey is so my bar is f pretty extensive but it's all whiskey um so when i go out to bars at least i can explore some other things but nine times out of ten i'm getting home i'm tired i'm just gonna pour up my own glass okay so did you discover a whiskey or did whiskey discover you honey i'm from the south whiskey discovered <laughs> me <laughs> okay I've been drinking whiskey on the porch since I was 10. It's just <laughs> Southern. <laughs> I'm pleased to welcome Danielle Mullen. Now stop me because the list is pretty extensive. You're an author, an editor, mm -hmm. creative assistant, and mm -hmm. owner of Semicolon Bookstore here in Chicago. Is there anything that I, did I leave anything out or? I'm a curatorial director. I, I just everything. I'm Every woman, obviously. That's <laughs> but no, I think that all of those things kind of run together and like one begets another. If you love words, you typically love art um, and you can typically write, edit, and read a lot. And so it all works. So what came first? Editing. Um, so I was in college, right? And I realized that everybody doesn't have a nat natural inclination to writing like I always have. Um, and so I started my first company in college, writing people's papers, uh, however illegal that was, um, we would write people's papers. And that was my first time delving into entrepreneurship. Um, we started making a little bit too much money. <laughs> Break that one down. <laughs> but yeah, the editing came first. Um, and then writing more for myself as as a way to get away from reading other people's writing all the time came next and then of course if i'm reading and writing i might as well have a bookstore it only makes sense so you know absolutely right now are your books i've been to your bookstore before but that was before i knew you were an author yes. can i purchase your books at semicolon no. Uh, so there's this thing that happens, okay? And I think a lot of authors will say the same thing. Your first couple of titles, you'll be like, oh, <laughs> it sucks so bad. I think it sucks now. A lot of people still say they love it, but I try to act like those initial titles don't even exist. Um, it's like Insanity? Yeah, Insanity. That is the name. It's, that's the name. Thank you. <laughs> but... I act like that one never existed. Like it didn't even happen. Um, I have a second one that's being, that's shelved by Penguin right now. Thank goodness. Um, Cause I hate that one too. Uh, but the, <laughs> the third one is the charm and that one will be dropping in April of 2021. So. I look forward to it. Should be fun. <laughs> um, how has um, Semicolon, your team and you as a, bookstore owner, how have you guys adapted during this pandemic? I think we figured out <laughs> because adapting is 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 an interesting word. Um, it's, it's a forced adjustment. That's what it is. And we have had that forced adjustment trying to figure out how we gonna keep our jobs first and foremost. And we find that it's easier to keep our jobs when we're likable and when we're ourselves. There's a huge difference in the way black booksellers sell books and we focus on the black and black booksellers so um we're always dancing chilling drinking having a good time but we also know everything about every book that we're selling and mm -hmm. that usness that singularity that comes directly from having a group of black women running a bookstore people appreciate it and that's the only way we're still holding on 
And I will say this, when you visit semicolon, you immediately feel it. Yeah. From, from, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, you walk in, you see murals, you see beautiful black people, you see yeah. colorful books, you see yeah. the children section, you just see a environment that is just welcoming. The first time I visited the store, we had a conversation like, I've known you since you was 10 drinking whiskey. <laughs> So, and that's how it feels when you're at home and that's what the space is supposed to feel like. You should feel like you can always come by and hang out. And it definitely is welcome. And yeah. for the 21 and up audience, you can bring your own bottles. They yes. encourage it. Yes, because what's a good conversation without a bottle? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I want to touch on the origins of semicolon. Mm -hmm. A lot of brands like Nike, they're synonymous with uh, the swoosh and being fast and victory. Baskin Robbins has the 31 in the title, so does that 31 flavors. Right. Semicolon is a is a symbol, but it means something different to you. Can you explain what semicolon means to you? So what semicolon represents in general is uh, the point in, in a sentence in writing where an author could stop the sentence and chooses to keep going. Um, I chose that symbol to represent what my store was called because for me, that's what this store was. Um, getting diagnosed with cancer and wanting to move, like, you know, having my, all of my doctors say, you need to sit still. And I honestly felt like I was going crazy. Um, I was bored. I was, I found that some people are better when they're moving and I'm one of those people. And so being in the midst of battling cancer and then putting an entire bookstore together, it suited me and it has continued to suit me and it continues to work. And you guys continue to expand. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that you guys just recently celebrated one year anniversary. Congratulations to that. Did the pandemic kind of make it feel like it wasn't a triumph or can you explain the feeling of reaching that one year mark i i i do believe that it felt less triumphant during the pandemic um it felt like we're now working on a day-to-day -day, not even a month to month or a year to year like every day we just have to get through and not close and that's like always the, the the thought at the top of my mind just don't close whatever we gotta do if i gotta hit the corner <laughs> hey, um, if that's what it looks like but yeah. getting to that year mark was like okay i can breathe a little because we made it here and if we can make it to a year we can make it to 10 years we can make it to 50 years we can make it to 100 years and we can become you know, the Barnes and Noble that we intend to become. And you've been constantly moving and adapting. Mm -hmm. I know that you did a partnership with CPS and some of the other businesses in your community to have a children's book drive. Yes. I know you had one recently, maybe a week or two ago. Can you explain what that actually is? For me, I feel like literacy is the opening of every door that you need open. If you can read something, you can know something. If you can know something, you can do something. And I think that when parents, I grew up incredibly poor, like we couldn't afford books. But I do recognize when I was able to access books, they specifically changed my life. And so I wanted to give the kids uh, the ability to have their lives change um and if we could pay for it okay because if that's the only way that it's going to get done then we're going to figure out how to pay for it so we started this initiative when we had zero dollars <laughs> and no idea how to make it happen and then good old joe joe fresh goods hit us up on twitter it's like i got some money for you and i'm like okay <laughs> and that's how it worked and he donated the money to us and we were able to provide that first batch of books that let people see us and see what we were doing and now we've raised over 150k and it's all going to giving these kids books that is awesome it's outstanding right <laughs> that, that is truly awesome i'm seeing people reposting and tagging semicolon on instagram and the line is like a trader joe's line trying to get it in. Is. 
people are lined up from the door. And if you haven't been there, the expressway is maybe just a block away. People yeah. are lining up from your door, going over the expressway just to get into that. Yes, and are. do you say, is that a reflection of you or just, what is that a reflection of? I think that's a reflection of what happens when you love something enough to see it through. I love semicolon. Semicolon, again, we were going to figure out how to stay here. Um, but loving it forces me to give it everything I've got and put together a team that also gives it everything they've got and that is felt in everything within the space, every conversation we have, everything we post on social media. This is a loving place and it's, it draws people and they're okay waiting. And plus we give them juice. We got juice. <laughs> if, if you feed me or give me a beverage, I don't mind waiting. It's, it's hot outside and they all just wait so nicely and they're like, we're just happy to support you. And that, that's love. And that's love begets love. And I, I appreciate getting it back. So would you say you've become a staple in your community now? I hope so. Um, that is that is my intention. I think that bookstores, independent bookstores especially, were always supposed to be community pillars. Like, this is a source of knowledge. We should be where the community turns to when they need help. Chicago needs help with their literacy rates. We can't ignore it and just sell books to people who can afford them. We got to be a change. Absolutely. Now, do you have, have I know you guys used to have a book club, mm -hmm. book club meetings. During the pandemic, have you guys continued to try to do some kind of no. book club um, online? Or? I hate virtual anything. <laughs> See this? <laughs> right. <laughs> I hate it. I can't stand it. It is not the same as having that person-to-person -person connection. And I think um, we are an experiential space and we bring about an experience in people that we converse with. And so we tried one virtual book club um, and we got drunk on the book club and it went left. So, <laughs> which happens. Um, <laughs> and so we are going to wait until COVID does what it's going to do and then bring our book club back. I'm trying to you know, do this virtual thing. I'm really trying to bring my personality out. Tempting. You can't do it. Nobody can do it. You have a big personality and you're still struggling. And that's what I'm talking <laughs> about. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> I I definitely have uh, had a doctor's appointment over the phone. Like, this is just a phone call. So how you doing? I'm fine. How you feeling? Right. <laughs> what else? What else? Right. It's, what else is it? Yeah. It doesn't feel good and it it just defeats the purpose of everything you're trying to do. Yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> uh well guys, thank you. Here. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thank you. Okay. Um you were can't... Like, be yourself, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I appreciate that. That's if it's one thing I try to do because I know this is difficult yeah. and I'm one who feeds off energy right. and the energy is just going straight into this camera, but I don't really think people may feel it. And that's why I'm happy that I have people like you who give me that energy yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and it's contagious. And when you walk in the store, you feel that energy immediately, Yeah. immediately. And when I was there last time, you guys were expanding your, you're always expanding. Always. Um, we make a little bit of money and we gonna add something, okay? <laughs> yeah. So because we're not physically in the bookstore like I originally planned, uh -huh. could you just give me a virtual walkthrough of what people, will, of what visitors will see when they come into semicolon? So when visitors come into semicolon, now they see so many shelves and so many books. We have tripled the amount of shelves and books that we had in here when we first opened. Um, and it's just because we want to offer everything. We are 80% African-American authors, 20% other. Um, 
and we have tripled the amount of shelves and books. We have added more art. We are going a little more contemporary. We're getting Ikea doing our thing. And so we got some <laughs> colors in here. We got some bookshelves. We got some rugs. We got, <laughs> got rugs. We feel it feels like going to your rich auntie's house. Um, okay. Have a boyfriend who's a graffiti artist. If that, if we could. <laughs> I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it. cultured, it's luxurious, but it's also a little artsy. And that is the feel that we're going for, and that's the feel that we love to have. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All of that makes sense. And when I walk into the walk into the bookstore, I see that. Yeah. I I definitely <laughs> see that. Um, I do want to touch on because I know someone personally who has benefited from this. You are a creative consultant and you're also a publisher. Yes. You you help up and coming authors achieve their goals of having published material. Can you touch on that for a moment? Um, yes. I think that black people as a unit, um, we like to save money where we can. But in trying to save money, we don't like to hire people to do the jobs that they know how to do. Um, we hire our cousin to do, you know, our illustrations for our children's books, and we won't hire an editor because we can use Grammarly or something like that. And I just, <laughs> I got tired of seeing our books look a specific way. When you put together a book, it should not look or feel self-published. And we all know what I mean when I say that, because you can see it and be like, mm -mm, they printed that in the kitchen. <laughs> I got tired of that. And I was like, let me help my people out. And so I created a publishing company that only works with minority authors. And the reason why is because we're the ones who need the help the most. I have years upon years in the industry, so that helps with the representation, that helps with marketing. We don't all have to be marketed as super black. <laughs> this is a black book for black people. No. I'm black, 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 black and black. Right. <laughs> it yeah. doesn't have to go that way. We should be marketed however the book demands marketing. And so that was, that was the purpose of creating it, just making sure that we are well represented on the full scope and the full spectrum of what black looks like because my black don't have to look like your black or anybody else's black. Absolutely. We all have a story that's unique to all unique to us. Yeah. And it's not gonna be your story. It's gonna exactly. be my story. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> now you you mentioned being the Barnes and Noble. That's the goal. That's now to have now, black the black independent, well-run version of Barnes and Noble. No shade, but you know. <laughs> I felt it. <laughs> hey, that's fine. It I is mean, what it is. What when, that's what happens when you've been at the top. People start coming for your head. I happen to be one of those people that I'm gonna aim for the head. And so, like, we gotta. That's what we want to create. We want. It to always feel like this, but we want to have more space. We want to be in every city. We want to do all of those things. And that's what we're working toward. So are you hinting that you're opening a second location soon? Second, third, and fourth, yep. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> that, that is awesome. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I think um, I read one of your articles, I believe it was a couple of years ago, and one of your first goals was to make bookstores cool. Yes. Do you feel like you have accomplished that goal? Listen to me now. I feel like we're on the way. I feel like Joe Fresh Goods just kind of like slid us in a little bit because I was going to figure out a way, but like he already had, he already got the kit. <laughs> so he slid us in, but I feel like Bookstores should feel like a shoe drop. And every time we see that line around the corner, that's what it feels like for me. And so we're going to continue working toward that coolness factor. We have some really dope merch dropping. Um, and we're doing some things that's going to just make us cool. Make books oh. cooler. Make this bookstore the coolest one anywhere. 
it's definitely the coolest bookstore I've ever been to. I will, I will give you that. I'm going on record saying semicolon. <laughs> semicolon is definitely cool. Like when you can go to a space, because who, who, truthfully, we all drink while we read. Absolutely. And the fact that you have those comfortable chairs, that yeah. nice, warm and welcoming atmosphere, and a beverage with your favorite book, right? You feel like you're at home. You're at home. That's how you're supposed to feel. And and reading shouldn't be a thing that we do when we're stressed out. Like this is a leisure activity. Um, so do it. Be leisurely. Hang out. Get your whiskey if you're smart. Um, <laughs> do it how you do it, and let's make it. Let's see all the dope black women chilling and reading. Not. On Rodeo, not you chilling and reading. Now, shop on Rodeo too, okay? Because I'm with that. Um, <laughs> chilling and reading, and like, let's make that those the photos that go viral. You know, I would love to see that. I know. We're I about, would love. You know, we might get something going over here. <laughs> okay, I'm with it. I mean, it's I am. Do it. I'm definitely with it. Well. Again, I want to say congratulations on reach, reaching your one year. Yes. Congratulations on all the initiatives that you're putting into play. Yeah. All the partnerships that you are establishing. Yeah. Um, and the and the forever expanding bookstore. Um, I will ask you this because you wear many hats. I don't know when you have time to do anything. Right. When do you have time to read? So the funny thing about being an editor is that you learn how to read super, super fast. So I can typically get through about a 300 page book in a couple hours. Um, uh, yeah. I won't talk about, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy and it messes you up because sometimes you want to savor things, but you naturally read so quickly that you just get through it and you're like, that was good. And it's like, you just kind of nod and move on to the next thing. So there's always, always, always time to read the, the big difference maker for me is I used to be heavy on always read a book, but I'm always on the go and I would leave books places that I really wanted. So now I read on my phone, which I am so ashamed to say, but I know I always have my phone. And so if I want to finish a couple of titles throughout the day, they're right there. So, I mean, I guess things adjust. Hopefully when I get more time to think, I can a real book again. You know, I have to read the ARCs. I have to know whether or not ARCs are advanced reader copies. Um, they usually come out six months before a book actually comes out. You decide if you want to carry it, how you want to push it. Um, and I feel like if I keep reading these ARCs, which I have to do, I'm going to get back to reading for pleasure again. But right now, there's just not enough time. Not if I want to sleep. <laughs> sleep, reading, sleep. Read to sleep. Well, okay. <laughs> Nobody knows, but I'm about to fade into the background. Like, I, it's about yeah. to. <laughs> I'm going to fade into the background, and our store manager, Jess, is going to handle this press within the next six months. But that's it for me. So I wanted to make sure that you did get yours um, because I told y'all I'd do it. I like to do what I say I would do. <laughs> I appreciate it. It's just, it's interesting. And it's the reason why people like you have to continue what you're doing. Like everything is slow going. Everything is a slow start. I was just, uh, we just hired a new employee today. And I was just talking about how, you know, when we open, we might've made $20 a day. Mm. Mm. Right now, on a good day. And we'd be like, yo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah. these days look very, very, very different. Yes. They do. Um, but that's the process. This is a year later, and all you have to do is get to that place and keep work. Don't stop working just because you're not where you think you're supposed to be. A and absolutely. It's you to have to just keep working. Because what I noticed is for when when I first opened, I was telling my family, like, repost, 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 and then, and, you know, you know, little bookstore. Yeah, you know, your little bookstore and stuff like that. And then I noticed that I, we ended up getting posted on a couple of big sites and we get all these followers and I recognize, wow, and this was without the help of my family. And then it reminds you, the people that you want to support you are not the ones who are going to get you to the next level. That's yeah. not where, if 
they are not supporting, that's perfect because that means that they're not the ones who are going to get you there. Absolutely. We, realized that, we took off even more. So now I don't ask nobody to do nothing. Y'all chill. We got it. <laughs> and look how it goes. We Absolutely. reach out to our family and friends. It's like, hey, hit me off. Like, help me out. Set me up. Make sure I'm seen. But they're not the ones. And that's why it's not working. Thank you for that. That that made me feel it's, it's when I drive when I drive past your store and I know I wasn't there from day one. Right. But when you got your awning and the sign, I was like, that's right. Right. That's right. She is out here grinding and now you know where that store is. At a time. Yes. One moment at a time and celebrate all of those small wins. Celebrate them. I shouted when you said, uh, right before that, I was like, I got it. Yeah, I'm telling you, small win. Because imagine yeah. me win. We used to make $20 a day. I'm the win? This is the win? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, yeah, yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. I, I'm like, I was telling, I was telling Daddy, I was like, yo, I got her. Finally. And she, you got to talk about how to about the deal. <laughs> she was like, I can't do it. Here's some liquor. I'm like, uh-uh. <laughs> Do nope. it. Nope. Just, I'm just stop me with that. that. I'm good with that. So no, keep going. Small yes, man. and represent yourself. Celebrate yourself. Don't even ask for support. Just do what you're doing. Yes, ma'am. Telling you. Watch yes, the difference. We got reconvene in a year and I'm be like, mm. <laughs> You gonna see me. <laughs> You know, he, I want him next. Him next, yeah, yeah. I like him so much, and I was surprised that we hadn't met sooner, and that yeah. he randomly hopped in my inbox. And when we met, I'm like, yeah, we should have been friends forever. But like, that's kind of how it goes. Things don't happen until they're supposed to. And then when they do happen, when they're supposed to, it's the easiest thing in the world. There was a reason why Danielle researched black-owned bookstores. There was a reason why your semicolon popped up. There was a reason we came into your books. There was a reason we had a conversation. There was a reason a pandemic happened because it was like, are right, you going to sit on your ass or are you going to try to do this show? You, you're going to do the show and do the show. And, and do the show. Because at the end of the day, you tried. And that's what kept me up at night. I'm like, you have it in you to do this. You just not trying. Not do trying. it. Do the work and nobody has to support the work. Do the work that you know you're supposed to be doing as much work as it takes. And that's the end of story. Because if you work hard enough, that's what I tell people. You cannot work me. That's the difference. I saw that. You said, I got a team of five or six people and we work, like work. But I work them. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and, and when time and time again, I'm the first here. I'm the last to leave. Whenever you catch me, I'm working because that's what the work looks like to me. And you don't have to outwork me for my dream. That ain't your position. <laughs> Did you see the Jordan documentary? Uh-uh. Well, he's, so the first episode, he was crying because he explained what you just explained. Mm -hmm. I'm a champion. And if you come to this team, I'm going to, you, our goal is to be champions. Absolutely. If you can't survive practice, how are you going to survive the postseason? If you're not willing to put in the work right now, when clearly there's nothing going on, it's a right. pandemic, ain't nothing going on. If you can't figure it out and survive this. Kill it when it's time. Exactly. Oh, right. now I got a studio, now I got a team of people. I ain't even got to worry about my lighting, my exactly. hair, makeup, my right. hair, all of that. But right now, you do right. what you have to do. Exactly. And anybody that's a part of your project, should be equally excited about doing the work. Absolutely, and they are. Yeah. I got a, I got a small team, and thank God that they're working for free. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you said twenty dollars. I'm like, can I get you a meal? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And sometimes that's all it takes. So I'm gonna tell you what happened right before the pandemic. Like we just, I was just having some issues with my team. I'm like, y'all are not as into this as I expect my team to be. So right before the pandemic, of course, we didn't know the pandemic was coming, but I let go of the whole team. Everybody. Wait, this is a new team? Uh, completely new. I didn't think what happened. 
as I, after I let go of the whole team, I'm literally sitting in the store by myself the next day. And I'm like, okay, we're going to figure it out. I wasn't expecting to hire anybody. Jess, my new manager, walks in and she's just chilling. And we start talking. And she's like, yeah, I had been coming in here before, but you were never here. Is that any other? And all of a sudden, I'm like, this is the perfect person to manage this space. There's no reason why I should I would have been in the store had I not let go of my team. But I need the perfect person to manage the space. And she had been in the space before. She had a love for it. My other employees came to the store all the time. Yeah. I would love to work here. And I'm like, okay. And it's a it's amazing to me how this occurred. I got a whole new team a week before the pandemic. The pandemic occurs, and I'm like, all right, y'all, I don't know what we got to do, but we're gonna be cool. Like we're gonna keep paying y'all. We figure it out. Then I realized every good thing starts happening at that point. Every good thing. And it's a reminder that as soon as you have your team together, as soon as you get yourself in the posi- out of the position that you're not supposed to be in and into the position that you know you're supposed to be in, everything happens. There's no way we could have handled these hundreds of thousands of orders with any other team. Like this entire team loves us. We are together for 20 hours a day. We don't argue. We chilling, we drinking, we vibing, and we working. And you can't outwork any of us in this space. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so I am happy that the universe works how it works, that God works how he works, and that we are more than good. You just preached the sermon that was preached at my church on Sunday. That's crazy. <laughs> the team, your team, team, you have to make sure that you pick the right, the right people. You may not pick the right people, but the right people will find, will pick you. Find you. <laughs> will find you. you know, and you're like, huh. <laughs> I'm begging people to come and work, and you are here before me? Clearly. <laughs> Clearly, you're here. It, it's a, it is amazing when your steps are already like, Thank God for this pandemic. I don't have have any questions about life. I'm just going to (laughs) roll. It's not my position to be choosing a space or choosing my steps. That's not on me. It's already pre-ordered. All I got to do is flow. (laughs) It's like, I always think it's like the thing. You know, you go to like theme parks and it's like Disney World and like you hop on the little thing or like even in the airport, it takes you from one gate to the other. Mm -hmm. Get on there and get to your gate. The signs are clearly there. They're right there. Those you have the guidance. You're going to your gate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's good stuff. Good, good stuff. <laughs> um, I do thank you. I'm the last interview. That's for it. For a year. For a year. Um, I, I truly do appreciate that. Um, Danielle, I don't know when this thing is going to end because it's a virus. Right. And, and viruses don't no. magically disappear and no. vaccines aren't made in six months. No. So, so when I see people camped up outside like it's a Jordan release, I'm like, all right, they're doing something right in there. Yeah. When people are like, oh, I'm going to semicolon. Yeah. And they all got yeah. their masks on too. Let's be clear. <laughs> For sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah. So are you are you actually op- are you opening to like limited capacity or are we we have a very limited capacity it's like 25 people um we try to keep it to like 15 because it's five people who work here um and just keep it low and try to have remind people to be mindful that there are people waiting outside um book browsing is one of those things that's naturally difficult to COVID proof right because (laughs) you pick up books you touch them we are trying to the purpose of this remodel is to figure out how to COVID proof this space enough to comfortably have people in here um so we're trying some things where we're gonna plexiglass all the shelves and then do a qr code so if you want to know what the book is about or read the summary you scan the qr code you want this book okay we'll get it from the back and then we become the only people handling books or you know of that nature that's not going to take away from the sanctity of browsing for books but also it's not going to put anybody in a precarious situation have you heard of smart labels? Like Nipsey Hussle has something in his store 
where if you had you have your phone, you scan it, it'll show your music video on the barcode. Mm -hmm. So immediately when you said that, it brought me back to that. Like if I scan this QR code, someone's reading the back of the book to me. The yeah. author is I I don't I don't know if that it actually exists in the realm of books. It doesn't. Um it doesn't yet. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> you see what we just did? You see what we just did there? Yep. Yep. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> just twenty dollars. That's all that matters. I got the twenty dollars. Don't worry about it. Just, just <laughs> all right. Let me get back to my team. Thank you. Thank. Thank you so so much. So much.